Hello everyone, welcome back to Ink Feats, where we feature feats of ink, and I am currently reading The Dragon Bone Chair by Tad Williams, and I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, I think in the last video I had chapters 1 through 7, this time I'm going to go over uh, maybe a little bit more over them again because I had to go back and just make sure I had everything straightened out in my mind. And now I'm going to go, I'm going to look at chapters 8 through 11. I stopped myself right when he, so full spoilers for this, by the way. Uh, I stopped myself right when Simon discovers Prince Joshua down in the deep depths of the, the secret, secret, secret chambers down underneath the castle, which of course there has to be those, but it's so exciting. Anyway, I stopped myself because I figured that was a really nice point to stop at. But I want to begin with a little bit of a flashback, like a highlight on the sentence right after Prester John dies. And that is, of course, just now he doesn't belong to simple souls like the peasants or anything. He belongs to the poets and the priests and the, what was it? Yeah, history scribes. And I noticed that after he, after John passes away, everyone refers to his more official title rather than Presbyter John. It's it's uh, like Presbyter John, or something like that. And I'm like, oh wow, he's really following through with like what he says. It's not just pretty prose for pretty prose sake. It's like, oh, <laughs> he's gonna keep it there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, just a little detail like that. He was that Williams put in there. Simon licks his finger and he tastes salt and it's like usually I wouldn't read this close but I'm I'm kind of invested I'm kind of excited about this but you usually when you taste blood like don't you just like taste metal instead of salt I mean that was me I I, I don't know I just thought I'm like why salt instead of metal but uh Getting into more of the things that I want to talk about, that was just something I noted. I wanted to talk about the two princes and how different that they are. Of like, Joshua tells Elias, "Please do not trust this guy," and Elias is like, "That's eh, fine." Of course, I'm talking about Pirates, and Elias just keeps trusting Pirates with things, and I'm like, "Why are you doing this?" Of course, it, it's it's very obvious to someone looking in that something is dangerous. He's got a red cloak for God's sake. <laughs> He's got a red cloak and he killed a dog right in front of Simon. So it's like, yeah, we were supposed to get the heebie-jeebies from this guy. But Elias isn't getting it because um, he's obviously got a spell over him. Now, Isgrimmer and Aolar were talking about like, what does Pirates have over the king? Like, what is going on with this guy? I thought that those two characters were really nice. Um, of course, they're... A little talking point for the reader to to identify with and to kind of reason out like what's going on with and I appreciate that because sometimes I need to be led to certain conclusions about Towser and his song so I was really disappointed with Elias's reaction to it um, even with even with Pirates being right beside him or Guthwolf I think is his name, his hand. I thought Elias might have a little bit more of a, okay, I, I do need to listen to this. You know, he, he did, he did a, a silence. <laughs> he did shush up Guthwolf. But when, um, it seems like when Pirates was after Towser um, singing the song about, you know, it's, it's a very thinly veiled allusion to the to the kingly situation that he's in right now but <laughs> I, yeah but I was really disappointed in Elias in not understanding that Towser is telling him what his reputation is with the with the people you know like if he if he's seen this way then he needs to know it and Towser's telling him hey you need to know this and trying to get it to him through all of these people. But yeah, that was a real, that was really disappointing because there was, there seemed to be a lot of promise for Elias, you know, like, uh, his father, Prester John, he was like, he was talking with Towser, I think, and saying like, yeah, he's a little stubborn and he's a little, um, 
foolhardy maybe, but he can be trained differently. And I'm like, hmm, well, we shall see because I don't know. I, I forgot how much, how old Elias might be actually, because if the king is like 80 years old, that makes his son probably around what? 50, if not 60, you know, and he's got basically a, a marriageable daughter up, up for in the market with a uh, fangbold. But wow. I mean, if he hasn't changed in, in all of this time, I don't think he's going to change just because he becomes king. Like, oh my gosh. And like, for some reason, people think that people can change other people in this book. Elias himself thinks that whoever, Fangbold can be changed by his daughter. I think her name is Miramel or something. Yeah, I think it, I think that's how you say it, Miramel. <sighs> Correct me if I'm wrong. It's okay if I am. If I, am. I don't mind. But I mean, like, why do these men think that these other men can be changed when they themselves are not changed? Like, Elias is not changed at all. You know, um, of course, that could be because the king is talking about an Elias not influenced by Pirates, but <laughs> why do they th keep, think keep thinking that other people are going to change these other people in power? Like, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. <laughs> Miramel is not going to change Fangbold, and nothing is going to change Elias. I'm not sure if Joshua is actually as, you know, kind-hearted as the song might suggest he is because obviously something happened to Elias's wife and Joshua is responsible for it. But I'm not sure I'm not sure if we should trust Joshua just because he admits that, you know, like there are people who make mistakes and they make big mistakes and it sounds like Joshua is one of those people. Um, now, that's not to say that he's totally untrustworthy, but I don't want to trust him completely and implicitly. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and of course, songs, they always embellish and they always like go to extremes when when describing people. And I wanted to mention the salt that, that Simon tastes because it's also he also lifts a salt-encrusted... Um, plate and I know this is probably just getting nitpicky but it's exciting you know like it's a new book and I'm excited about reading this because lots of people love this book and I just want to take his fine tooth comb with it even the first time that I read it but he pushes away a rust and salt encrusted plate to co to see Prince Joshua and I'm thinking this can't be a coincidence really of course, it is common enough. Salt is a is a is a common enough taste, so it might be the it might be a coincidence. It might not be, whatever. I, it's just something that I noticed. I like Simon. <laughs> he still amuses me because, oh, I can see now how people can get kind of frustrated with him. It's like okay, he's very much about himself, but he's young. He's such a young person. Like of course, he's about himself. He's young and he needs to figure himself out. Um, oh my gosh, I forgot about his almost betrayal of the doctor. Like, what is he doing? Why is he doing this? Like, oh, that's, that's one thing. That's one thing I can blame him for is like trying to join the guard instead of, instead of being the apprentice to, oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm starting to get sorted in the stone vibes from this. Because wasn't there a point? So maybe if I'm getting that vibe, it might be an Arthurian vibe that like generally takes place in these stories. But I did not see this betrayal coming from Simon. Like I know that he was a little frustrated with the doctor's teachings, but I didn't realize that he was so frustrated with it to, to like leave everything. I'm like, oh, this is ridiculous. My dear Simon, what are you doing? <laughs> You should have been rejected. You should have been rejected though. Oh, wow, I can't believe I forgot about that. Anyway, that those are my thoughts basically on the whole thing is that like TLDR, I guess, is, um, you know, the two princes are, of course are at odds because of Pirates. <laughs> and 
Joshua is locked up down in the dungeon, which is very interesting. Is Grimmer and Aolar are kind of like a, a voice of reason for the audience. It's nice to see that there's at least some resistance in the court. We find that Elias, perhaps his corruption has gone so far as to suggest that he's out of his mind a little bit. Just a little bit more than usual <laughs> because of Pyrotis. All right. I'm going to enjoy the next segment, whatever I get done in the next week or so. I hope you have a great day. Bye.